and welcome to Crusader Nation. My name is Sean Ryan and I will be your host for your second installment of Crusader Nation for the last week of September 2015. After the kickoff of the walkathon on the 23rd, the school began to start fundraising to revamp and update the library. As of Wednesday, the student body has reached nearly 24% of the goal. The freshmen lead, lead way with $4,982. Following them are the sophomores with $4,463. The juniors come in third with 3796 and seniors fall in last with a weak $2,050. The walk isn't far off, guys. Let's get out there and get that new library. The Peer Educators will be hosting its annual dodgeball tournament this year after the Canisius Walkathon. Register for, registration forms can be found on Schoology with the Walkathon information. Seven academically eligible students per team can play in the single elimination tournament. And space is limited. The registration forms are due to Mrs. Keating the, in the nurse's office as soon as possible so you don't miss out on the action. A boundary ball tournament has been organized by junior Matt Taboni and Mr. Ahrens to raise money for the construction of a playground for the Heritage Center of Western New York. Teams can be formed from 10 to 15 students from any high school in Western New York. To sign up, contact Matt Taboni or Campus Ministry and look for information on the Ignatian Service tab on the Canisius High School website. Show some unbridled enthusiasm and register your team of two to four artists for the fourth annual Sidewalk Art Contest to be held on the morning of October 6th. This year's theme is Worlds Unseen. Get your registration form from Mrs. Petek in the Art Room and 302. The varsity volleyball team came away with a three-set victory over the Frontier Falcons by scores of 25 to 12, 25 to 18, and 25 to 23. The Crusaders were led offensively by Devin Jocelyn with 12 kills and 5 aces. Griffin Schmidt added 9 kills, while Dan Barry and Chaz Polka each added 6 kills. Nick Rankis also added 2 aces. Varsity volleyball team leaders Drew Shockey and Charlie Desmond led the team to victory against St. Francis this Wednesday. St. Francis hosted. Both teams went in undefeated, but only one came out victorious. And now here's Nate with your varsity football update. What's good, Canisius? I'm Nate Massolino here with your sports section for the second episode of Crusader Nation. This past weekend, your Crusader football team took on DePaul Catholic Spartans from New Jersey and came out with a huge 17-14 victory. In the process, they defeated the number one running back recruit in the nation, Kareem Walker, who's currently committed to Ohio State. Big games came from quarterback Tyler Stranahan, who threw the ball almost every down of the game. And on the defensive end, Alon Montgomery, who had a key interception and a batted down pass at the end of the game. But we'll hear more from them later. For now, let's take a look at the highlight reel. Once again, the Crusaders marched onto their home field this weekend to take on the DePaul Catholic Spartans. Canisius jumped to an early lead on their first drive as Tyler Stranahan hit Justin Jones on this deep ball for a 40-yard touchdown reception. Tyler wasn't done working downfield, as this time he found Desmond Nicholas with another 40-yard reception that took them to the one-yard line. That would set up the next play where Raekwon Greer took it into the end zone, who's filling in for injured running back Cole Berniston this week. The defense was more than strong as they shut out DePaul in the first quarter, exploiting their young quarterback as we see Colby Moultrie and Mason Hughes sacking him and Alon Montgomery intercepting one of his pass attempts later in the half. They also did a phenomenal job of shutting down star running back and number one recruit in the nation, Kareem Walker, in this first half. The new face of Spencer James Stuff was seen at the game, along with the familiar one and very notable alumni, Jimmy Gaines, a star football player at Canisius before he graduated in 2010. He went on to play at University of Miami and is now in the NFL. Other than him, we also see our principal, dean of students, and president ready for an oh, exciting God. second half. Canisius continued to play strong in the defensive end, but not quite as strong as the first half, as they surrendered two touchdowns, but still maintained a 17-14 lead. The defensive stand at the end of the game was capped off by Alon Montgomery to end the final drive as he batted down this pass. The Blue Crew was more than happy to see this as their team was walking away with the W, especially Jack Naughton and Reed Martin in the front of the student section. The defensive player of the game for Canisius had a big interception for us and a key pass batted down in the end of the game that really sealed the victory. That last drive for DePaul when you knocked down that last pass it seemed pretty emotional. How was it coming back into the huddle? Man, 
I, I don't even know what happened going back into her. Like, we just trying to get the calls in and play fast and not get beat deep or anything, man. I mean, you really had a phenomenal game locking down their receivers all day. That first interception in the first half, what was going through your mind that whole play? I was just thinking, please throw it, please throw it. I'm right here. I want you to throw it. And it was, he threw it, so I just tried to make do what I could when I'm running. Well, it sounds like you had a lot more aggressive approach. Do you think that was a big part of you having such a successful game today? Yes, definitely. Aggression is like the key to football. Even if you're not as fast or not as big, if you're aggressive, you can do good. Well, once again, Alon Montgomery had a phenomenal game today. Thank you. Canisius Crusaders, your winning team today, Tyler Stranahan. Tyler, they asked a lot out of you today. The defensive line was strong, so you couldn't get much going with the run game. You seem tired. How much of a load was that on your body, having to throw that many times? Uh, it was a lot, but, I mean, we practice like that, so I'm used to it. The team's used to it, and we're just used to it. We prepare like that. It seemed like the secondary for DePaul really stepped up their game in the second half. How did you try to deal with that later on when you were really trying to put some points on the board? Oh uh, Yeah, they were throwing some different coverages at us. Uh, so I just had to read them, and I, we didn't really adjust too much to them. Uh, they just kept showing us different coverages, so we just had to adjust to the coverage they were in. Well, you had a phenomenal game today. They came out with the victory. Tyler Stranahan, everyone. Thank you. It's not just the players on the field doing an excellent job. It's the behind-the-scenes work, too. This week, especially coming from head coach Rich Robbins, as he was honored with the Buffalo Bills Ad Pro Coach of the Week Award. And we're going to hear more from him right now. Ball head coach Rich Robbins coming off a big win against DePaul Catholic over the weekend. This was a very talented team, and you were facing the number one running back in the nation. What was your strategy coming in to stop him? Well, yeah, he's a heck of a ball player. They have a, a great team, like nine or ten guys going Division One. But, uh, you know, our plan was really to just to attack them, attack their running game. Uh, they have a sophomore quarterback, you know, so their running game is definitely the strength of their team. So we just really brought a lot of pressure and got after them. You know, our defensive coaches did a great job with the game plan, and then the kids really went out there and executed it. Yeah, now you've been honored with a lot of awards over the years, championship trophies, coach of the year, but now you have the Buffalo Bills Ad Pro Coach of the Week. How, how does it feel being honored like this so consistently? No, it's great. It's, um, you know, I've been blessed each year to, to win that thing since I've, you know, been the head coach here in the last four years or so. Um, and it's great. You get free tickets to a Bills game and, 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 you know, get to go out on the field and be recognized for that. And most importantly, it comes with a $1,000 uh, grant for our football program that we can use towards equipment or, or you know whatever the kids need so that's really the best part well that's awesome and you got the big matchup against Ferrani's this week division what's your strategy coming in now yeah certainly big league game they're opening up their brand new stadium uh, maybe some new uniforms or something I hear so I'm sure those guys will be excited and ready to go so we just need to match their intensity especially early on and start fast and as long as we execute in all three phases I think we'll be in good shape well we appreciate taking time out to do this thank you Rich Robbins here now looking forward to this weekend, your Crusader football team will be taking on the St. Francis Red Raiders on the road Friday night. Now the Canisius team comes in as a favorite, but don't write off St. Franny's just yet as Jerry Hickson and a strong offensive line could be tough to deal with. We expect to see the blue crew there in full swing. Now we're going back to you, Sean. The first Kairos of this year had a rainy start this Wednesday as they headed out to Cradle Beach. As Kairos 84 kicks off, we would like to thank everyone in our campus ministry program for all that they do for our retreats. This includes Father Betty, Mr. Ahrens, Mr. Pitek, and Mrs. Ignacic. If you haven't already signed up for a retreat this year, stop by campus ministry to find out more. It may not be too late. That's all for today, Canisius. Thank you. Keep on being men and women for others.